time, weather, and... Microsoft acquired GitHub in 2018, then they bought half of OpenAI in 2019, and then OpenAI released ChatGPT in December 2022. So around six months later, in May 2023, GitHub rolled out a major redesign of Copilot that leverages the unique generative AI capabilities of OpenAI further trained on data from GitHub and Microsoft. The new GitHub Copilot is amazing, but you have to know how and when it can be useful and that's exactly what we're about to talk about. All right, enough of the formalities. Let's get into it. What I thought I was going to do was sign up for the free trial, bone up on Copilot, make this video, and then kill the subscription. However, I love the product, and I am now a paying customer. More specifically, and more importantly, I want to show you how I'm using Copilot inside of VS Code. You're going to love our game plan today. Screw demos. We're about to use Copilot right now inside of VS Code on a real project to do some real work right now. This repository is for a video that I recorded a couple of weeks ago to create an AWS REST API gateway and Lambda function that handles calls to the OpenAI Python API. Cool, huh? All right, here's the situation. This is a good repo, but it could be better. We're mostly gonna focus on the Python code for the Lambda that handles the OpenAI API calls. So this would be kind of a double bonus for any of you who are also interested in creating custom OpenAI applications using nearly free serverless gear from AWS. And Copilot is gonna act as our code pair today to help us identify improvement areas in this code. This video is not sponsored, by the way. I just think Copilot's worthy of your attention. It's a great product. Here's what you have to do inside of VS Code, by the way, to get this set up. I'm going to travel over to Extensions, and I think it's called Copilot. Copilot, yeah, here it is. And it's as simple as running this install and you're done. And, and then what that's going to get you is four different things. And we're going to look at all four of those right now, so we'll just hit it piece by piece. All right, um, so where I mostly use Copilot is for what I would consider the mundane but important and knowledge intensive kinds of stuff. So let me give you hard examples. Uh, this here, uh, Toxiny, which you need to get Flake 8 set up for Python, is a good example of something that's knowledge intensive in my personal opinion, I find it just a little bit arcane just simply because I'm not in here on a daily basis. And so here's your first example of Copilot going to work for us. So um, this is text completions inside of a source file document. And so here it's prompting us for uh, what it thinks would be a reasonable next thing to put in this file if we felt so compelled. Uh, and so if I hit the tab key, it'll accept that suggestion and it'll keep doing this until it runs out of suggestions and so uh, it looks like that's it for PyTest and here's for Python coverage with some stuff all right and goodness there's a bunch and more all right you get the idea so so that is uh, text completions now so I have this make file and uh, this is the same thing. Make is another case where uh, I find what's in here just a little bit arcane and esoteric simply by virtue of me not spending a whole lot of time making make files. And so I know enough to get by, but that's about it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use uh, comment prompting in this case, and I'm going to give it. Some, I'm going to give Copilot some instructions. I'm going to say um, set up a basic. Uh, Python environment and Terraform, because we have some Terraform code in here. Yeah. All right, let's just see what it comes up with. All right, making it. Run making it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Uh huh. And. I don't understand. 
understand. Um, that was kind of a bust. Okay. Um, well, I didn't get anything good with that. So let me try uh, the chat functionality. Now, by the way, I've taken Copilot chat and I've penned it to the right-hand sidebar. So provide suggestions for this make file. Now that's pretty, I'm, I'm breaking my own rules, uh, just kind of on purpose. And that the instruction that I just provided is not really that specific. But nonetheless, look, <laughs> there's, there's some pretty good suggestions in here. Um, this actually is something that you're supposed to do. I don't actually know why, but you're supposed to put that uh, in your make files, and I forgot to do that. And then uh, they've got this nice clean and test. We don't need the build because this is a Lambda, but these are useful. Uh, that, those, those are good suggestions. So I'm going to say point score copilot. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Okay, so let's spend the balance of what time we have left inside of Python. And um, let's see, you've seen the chat window and we've seen prompting a couple with text completion and prompting. And so now let me let me manufacture a bug. If we here we go. So here's a here's a call to something. It's got uh, it's not that complicated either, but here. We'll just do this. I'm going to I'm going to delete this comma. And then that piece on top, that's coming from the Cornflakes extension for Python. And then the, let's see, this didn't, strangely, it didn't come up with uh, a quick fix via Copilot. So I'll right click on this and we can do it this way. Um, so you get Copilot in the context menu once it's set up and running. And then we can ask Copilot to fix this syntax error for us. And uh, so far, it's done pretty good. It's not as fast as I'd like it to be, but it, um, it hasn't butchered any of my code so far when I use it for these fixes. Now, having said that, I, I, haven't, I haven't run across a real zinger of a Python bug um, that I could try it on. So, um, I don't know, if you have, then drop a comment and uh, help us all out. All right, uh, this is par for the course. So it figured it out, it added the comma, but Copilot fixed it for us. We can also use Copilot to get narrative explanations of our code by highlighting it and then asking it to explain it like this. And you can do this two ways. You can also just type in explain this in the chat bar and it, 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 it understands both instructions the same. Okay, so look over here and yeah, that's an accurate explanation of what this Python code does. And so if you're learning Python, then that's, that could be helpful. Okay, last thing, here's what I wanna do for my last trick is uh, I, I've recently installed Flake 8 in this project, but I haven't really made use of it. So I'm going to run Flake 8 on the command line right now and see what comes back. And kind of the, the idea here is that we can depend on Flake 8 for the op opinionated uh, judgments, but we can use Copilot perhaps uh, to try to take care of any of the criticism that comes back from Flake 8. Hey! Not bad. Uh, so apparently, I, I'm just missing some doc strings on uh, some of the functions. So let's look at a couple of these and see if we can make use of Copilot to speed things up for us with these missing doc strings. So this here, well, yeah, good point. Um, I should have put a doc string in here, and I didn't. And so it gave us, <laughs> it's not that interesting. Um, Let's see, how about this? Let's do this. I'm gonna highlight it, go over here. Let me clear this. And then how about this? Suggest a more detailed doc string and see if it comes up with anything better than what it gave us there. Hey, hey look at that. Okay, that's that looks more pro. All right, so and I'll just grab this. Pretty cool. Huh? So these are the kinds of things that I think Copilot 
is particularly useful for. By the way, you might also be interested in this video from GitHub's product manager, Allison Weiss, and developer advocate, Burke Holland. Uh, they are both delightful, intelligent, and very knowledgeable on how to get the most out of Copilot. By the way, you can follow this QR code to get signed up for a free trial. All right, well, that's all for now. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, then consider liking and subscribing because that really helps, and it'll help you to see more great videos like this. And I will see you in the next video.